it's that time again, fish heads. We are gonna do a really cool spray session today. Not just any old spray session. Yes, I do get to my email as often as I can. I try and answer a lot of questions. I get a lot of really cool suggestions. And occasionally I get this really awesome email that just brings the biggest smile to my face. And I think I said that in my answer to these folks. So Alexia is a young lady who loves to fish and I absolutely love seeing kids and young people and teenagers and young adults really embrace the sport, embrace the art of airbrushing and uh, continue on through their adult years. Alexia had a school project and I got, uh, I got an email from Brian Sager and I believe that he is the grandfather, I think. Um, so basically, let's, let's just go ahead and show that to you guys. Hi, Jen. I really appreciate watching your videos on YouTube. I have a granddaughter that's approaching her golden birthday. She'll be eight years old on August the 8th. We're raising her to be an avid fisherman. As one of her home school art classes, I had her watch your tips and tricks video from May 18th to see the colors and designs on different fishing lures. Then I had some lure shapes drawn on pieces of paper. Her assignment was to make her own lure color patterns. Would you be able to paint a few of her patterns on wiggle warp blanks? Yeah, I can. Um, because of the real estate and because of, because I, I'd like to spend a little bit more time on the patterns because you guys are gonna see those in just a second. Um, I might do them on 2.5s. I do have wiggle wart uh, blanks in stock, but I, re I just have a feeling that she's going to enjoy cranking these things on 2.5s and really see her patterns come to life because I'll be able to paint bigger patterns. So I think that's what I'm going to do today. So my answer to them was that just brought the big smile on my face. Let's make that happen. Email me pictures. Thanks, this will be so fun. And as we're cycling through this, I'm showing you glimpses of, um, of her fishing and some of the stuff that she's been doing was super cool. And uh, the response I got from Brian was, thank you so much, my wife, uh, my wife's son, Alexia's father, and myself are excited to have you paint these for us. I've included pictures of Alexia, some of her catches. Her father, Kyle, is in the bluegill picture. The other pictures include my wife, youngest son, and myself. The picture of the channel cat is her most recent bucket, uh, bucket list catch. For a year and a half, she's been wishing, wishing to catch a catfish. Well, Memorial Day, Alexia's wish was fulfilled with 25 and a half inch channel cat caught while trolling for walleyes. That is so awesome. As to the paint schemes, I made a template of two cedar lures with broken lips I found while fishing. Both were cedar lures and the smaller was a Poe. After I explained how fish eyes only show one side, she started to add an eye to her drawings. Uh, we've chosen four patterns that we would like painted, two from each page. On one, the patterns are named lure patterns one and two. On the second page, the rainbow pike pattern and Alexia's bluegill. Might be hard to distinguish the lure pattern one, so the color scheme is lighter pink and the, the belly and a, with a darker pink in the cheek and the eye area. Dark purple on top of the head, magenta for the tail. I mentioned wiggle warts, but leave it to your experience if you feel a different lure body would work better. Um, also leave any detail work that you would accent the finished product. Thank you once again, Brian Sager. So what I'm going to do is I'm, because of the duration of the videos that I produce, the videos for spray sessions are normally between 20 and 30 minutes long, and I'll probably be able to knock out two lures in that time frame. So that's what we're going to concentrate on today. And I tell you, both of these, both of the pictures that we have look fantastic, and I love all the patterns but i think on camera folks i really want to do this rainbow pike and alexia's bluegill so that's what we're going to do today stay tuned it's going to be a fun one okay over here at the spray bench, and I'm not going to bore you guys to tears, so I've already applied white primer 
on both of the lures that we're going to be working on today. These are 2.5 square bills, just a general pattern. Let me get the rest of this stuff out of the way. And because of the time constraints, I will only be able to do two on camera. Um, very cool patterns, all of them. I love them all a lot. Uh, but we're going to focus on, I think, maybe two of your favorites and definitely my two favorites, which is Alexia's Bluegill and the Rainbow Pike. So once that white primer is on, I notice that she's got just a little bit of pink throughout the back here, maybe a little bit of purple up top and some darker blues. So we're going to start with pink and I'm actually going to give it a little bit more pop than just the pink. I'm going to translate that into some fluorescent, some hot pink. And I think this is a fish catcher for sure and I can't wait for her to show me what she catches with it. So we're just going to add a little pink to the throat here on this first one. And it looks like she's got just a little bit of pink in this midsection here, almost in a V shape. So we're going to do a V shape on both sides. And maybe a little bit underneath, so we're going to meet that up in the bottom. And now we've got that pink. So we've got, let's do a little bit of pearl lime, which is actually one of my favorite colors for a bluegill. And you can see it in there. And we're gonna we're gonna cover a lot of ground with this because I'm gonna be blending wet on wet, which is one of my favorite things to do. You guys know I love it. So I'm gonna apply this pearl, give it a little bit of a shimmer and then blend the other colors into it. Now to that, I can see that she's got a little bit darker green. So we're going to give it, let's see here, I really like this Createx Tropical Green. And I think the blue will mix into that real well. So towards the middle here, we've got a little bit of tropical green and maybe a little bit along the back here. Awesome. I cleaned this out, cleaned the chamber out real well and we have not heat set yet. I'm going to find, she's got some pretty bold colors going on in here. I like this bright blue just for the bottom. So as we come around, put this a little bit lower. kind of translate there into that pink and it looks like she's got some up here as well. So we'll translate that in there for her. Pretty cool so far. Pretty cool. A little bit darker there and a little bit on the nose. Give this a rinse. Now it also looks like she might have a little bit of purple just along the top here. So once we flush that down, clean that out a little bit, and I've got this, there we go. Got that. Iwata airbrush cleaner going on. I'm going to come in with a little bit of Pearl Plum. We're going to hit that nose. And 
And we're gonna meet this hot pink here as well. Cause it looks like she brings that back a good ways in her diagram for me. All right. You know, as all these colors are coming together and we still have not heat set, they're blending really, really cool. And I really like how this is starting to turn out. All right, now, what else have we got going on in here? Looks like a little bit of dark green accenting around the body and the eye. So I'm gonna put some moss green in here for you, Alexia. And go just around the eye here. Just around this one. And then I'm gonna come back and hit this little area here. And on the other side as well. Now before we do a heat set, the last thing I wanna do is add just a little bit of opaque pearl additive into this. I wanna turn my pressure back up. I hit this whole bait with additive. undersides real good and then we're going to give it a long heat set. I'm going to heat set it off camera but we will heat set and then I'm going to do a little bit of detailing in here for you. Now I've decided to let this other side sit here for a second and as I do that I'm going to start out by putting this beautiful pearl pineapple, this deep yellow color on the entire body of this because again we're going to blend. We're doing wet on wet painting. This is not reduced. There we go. Just run that all the way out. Almost there. And to that it looks like she's got some blue down here, a little bit of purple, some red slashes. She's got a little green on the back side there and this blue green up top. So the next lightest color that I see is this, I'm going to hit that pearl lime again. And we're going to run it on this back at an angle. Now to the lime pearl, we're gonna just kind of layer in a little bit of darker green here on the back at an angle the way she's got it. This underside, angle it up. There we go. She's got a little bit of blue on that chin, so I'm going to switch the blues up a little bit. I'm going to go with this Maui blue here. Just run that under the chin. Perfect. And just kind of fold that back. There we go. Good deal. Now the next thing that I see that she's got going on, I am going to shoot this out of the chamber here. The next thing I see that she has going on is like a really dark bluish green. I do have a blue green. So I think what we're going to do is use this wicked detail blue green. Shoots pretty thin. Make sure I got the junk out of there. Just throw a couple of drops on there. This is pretty dark. Bring my pressure down just a wee bit. Been shooting um, pretty much around 
20, 25. Now we're starting to see it take on those pike characteristics. A little bit darker. Well, I like that. That's good. Loaded into the chamber, I've got some violet. And we're going to just kind of bring this into this one area here where she's got that drop down. And do the same thing on the other side. You know, it's interesting when you see how other people interpret different patterns. And I love seeing through the mind of a child. It's one of the coolest things, and I think as we grow up and grow older in life, we kind of lose a little bit of that creativity and that spark that let's try something completely out of the box and do it my way. And um, this is a great reminder to not lose sight of that, not lose hold of that, because our children are the future. And who knows, this might just be the next best pike pattern. You never know. And we won't know until Alexia tries them. So we have got the purple, we've got the, the blue-green, the yellow, got the blue under the chin. I think we need a little bit of red in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat set this. I'm gonna heat set both sides again, and we'll be right back. I am going to do, because I did get permission, I think the letter says, I also leave any detail work that would accent the finished product to you. So one thing that I'm going to leave as traditional, the only thing we're going to do traditional, is we're going to run some pike lines in copper gold down the side of this lure, just on this one, uh, because it is a traditional pike pattern. So I know that there's a lot of traditionalists out there that are maybe you're cringing, maybe you're not, but that's not the point of doing stuff like this. The point is to think outside of yourself. Nothing awesome that was ever invented in the history of time was like anything else that was out there. You've got a lot of copycats out there. Nature doesn't screw up. Nature is not specific. You won't find, just like our fingerprints, you won't find a single thing out there that's exactly like something else unless it is at a growth stage or it's a, it's a twin or a clone. There are twins out there. But even with humans, twins have completely different mindsets. We all know that. So just this type of an exercise is to get you guys to think out of the box a little bit and stretch your imagination and do something super cool that could be really fun and you never know when it's going to be that next really cool pattern. I'm trying to line this up to where I think, there we go, I think I've found some stuff that might be suitable. I'm just going to run it top to bottom and out the back. There we go. And we will do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to just kind of scrape that off, get that paint off, because we're going to reverse it. Make sure there's nothing tacky or sticky. And just come at it from the other side. get back on this one more time. And we'll do one on top. I'll leave the underside alone, but I will do one on top. Just kind of lay down. That'll do. A little bit at the face. Now we've got those traditional gold pike 
signatures. And now we're going to put in Alexia's red. And it's a very bold defined red on this one. It's not a question of pink. It's absolutely red. She's got two slashes on this and a little bit more. Almost like it's wounded or there's another fish chasing it. That's sort of how I'm interpreting this. So my question is, should I, should I make this a wounded bait? Off camera, I pondered and I pondered and I've decided that I am going to make this pike a wounded pike. We're going to have the colors that she has specified in here, but I love those red slashes. It makes me think that some other fish is chasing this thing, and I'm just going to, that's how I'm going to do it. That's my interpretation. Art is subjective. So the one thing that we need to do, though, is we need to go ahead and put in this gill plate here. And we're doing that in a detail black magenta. And I'll come under here. Let that go all the way under. Scrape that down. Get the goo off of it. And flip around to this side. part there. And there's our gill plate. And we're going to do an ear flap on this one. Don't forget that. And we got to flip these baits over. So that we can get these gill plates on both. And just come back down like this. on this side. Make sure we're good there. There we go. That. If you get a little excess on there, it's okay. You can just wipe it off with your fingertip. No harm, no foul. And then come up and hit this curve just like this. And there you have it. We're going to wound this bait. And we're going to do an ear flap and some bluegill stripes on that one. I am going to darken the eyes here just a little bit. There we go. Now for our bluegill here, I've just got some rough cut, rough rip paper. We're going to start in the back here. Give it some bluegill lines and don't forget the top and the bottom. Make sure there's nothing wet. Come back on the other side of that and work in your opposite direction. Super cool. Five lines on one side, now we're going to do five on the other. And 
top and on the bottom. And come back. Move this up a little bit. Make sure there's no excess paint on there. And run those lines out. Awesomeness. Now we've got our bluegill lines. Now we just need to do the ear flap and a little white trim on that. Put the eyes on it and we have got a bluegill, Alexia's bluegill, right here. Very cool. Now we need to put a little bit of red right there. Couple of drops of black in the chamber for this ear flap. Good deal. Get this side on. All right. Got both of those on. I'm going to set this bluegill off to the side for a second while we give this some red splotches here. Pull these paints out of the way. It's always a good idea if you have other stuff in the area to kind of get them covered if you're going to be, or move them. If you have a choice, you can move them. If you don't want to move them, you can cover them. Anytime you're doing any kind of splotching or splattering. And we're going to use, where's my cup here? Put just a few drops of this in the cup. Don't need much. Really, that's probably too much. And then the way we do this is we just kind of dab the end of this paintbrush tip in and have some fun. You don't want to overkill it, but you do want it to get noticed. Make sure you guys are in frame there. And then just a nice little splatter pattern. And get some on the belly here. And voila. Now we're going to heat set it. So I just want one drop, really, maybe two, of opaque white. Opaque is thicker. I like using it for that little white underline on the bluegills. Generally in nature, you're not going to find a real prominent white underlining on the ear flap, but when you have a lure and you want to kind of give that fish a target or put a bullseye on it, this is certainly one way to do that. And you can see how that looks right there. Our bluegill is complete. All we need now are a pair of cool reddish yellow eyes and we're good to go with that bait. Let's come over here and take a look at how this is set up. Really love this rainbow pike, Alexia. It's hard to figure out what my favorite is. I, I want to know what y'all's favorite is on this. I like them both. I like them both very much. And the whole point of an exercise like this is to get outside of a traditional thought process. And sometimes, most times, looking through the eyes of a child is fantastic. Let's put some eyes on these. Okay, so now we are down to getting the eyes in these cool baits for Alexia. I tell you what, I have had so much fun 
putting these patterns together for her. It is so cool to view stuff through a different lens. And I hope that I have done this young lady some justice for these baits. Um, man, oh man, I hope she likes them. I hope, I hope you like them, Alexia. I hope that I have been able to uh, bring your images to life. I think we've got this, uh, this bluegill of yours down pat. Um, I put your name on it too. I hope you like it. Um, I think I spelled your name right. I hope I did on this pike also have your name on it and i think i just want to go with standard gold eyes because pike have gold eyes and it's going to go really well with the gold in this already so always super glue the eyes and that is that folks Man, what a blast doing stuff like this today. This is great. This is, this is exactly what I needed to be doing today. And I've been looking at these, and I knew that I wouldn't have time to do all of them. I was hoping to get to more of them. But at least I have got, hopefully, her two favorite patterns, definitely my two favorite patterns done for you today, Alexia. Thank you so much, Brian, for sending in your, your request and the questions. And we're going to leave you guys with pictures of these and and with pictures of this awesome young lady, this young angler, fishing and catching. You guys have a blast. Have a great day. I want to see what cool patterns you can come up with. Um, you want to do any of these? Knock yourself out. We've got templates all day long. You guys have a great day. Thanks for the view. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. And happy casting from Jekyll Bates.